If you have not already done so, watch the previous video in the playlist before you view this video. It can be located via this link. In the previous video we looked at this particular function here. This is where we supplied the function with a character and here I'm showing it being supplied with capital A. And what the function will do is return the number that represents that inside a computer. And of course it looks like this in the code. This would be the character, in this case we looked at capital A, that will be supplied to this particular function here. And what will be assigned to this particular variable would be the number 65. In this particular video we're going to have a look at this particular function here. Now you can regard this if you like as being the opposite to the previous function we've been looking at. Because here you supply it with a number and this number is in this case going to be 65 and it tells me what the character is that is represented by 65 in the actual computer. And the previous function we looked at we actually supplied the character and it told us the number here we supply the number and it tells us the character and this is what it looks like in code here you can see we supply the character code and the example we have just looked at is this was 65 this is the function to which we supply this particular character code and what's then assigned to this character is capital A so if we look at this simple program here, here you can see on this line that I've actually assigned 65 to the variable character code. So character code is now holding the integer 65. This is then supplied here to this particular function and then this function returns capital A which is then assigned to this particular variable here. Now this variable will then be a string of one length. Remember there is no character type in Python. This line will then print out the character code, which is 65. It will then print out the character that is represented by 65 in the computer program. And you will get this. Here you can see we have the 65 and the A. If we have a look at this particular program here, it's identical to the one above, apart from this line here where you can see I've changed this to 66. Now, because this is 66 and 1 bigger than the 65, and we know 65 was capital A, the last video made it clear that we had a sequence taking place here. So 66 must represent capital B. So the runtime, if we have a look at it, is 66 and capital B, as we can see. If we look at the following program, here you can see I've made the character code 90. Now, I know 90 to be capital Z. So when we actually run it, we can see we have the 90 and the capital Z. I've made another change to the program here. Here you can see I've made the character code 59. Now from the previous video, you might remember what the 59 was. But if we run it, we can see that it is the semicolon. So this is an example of a character, a semicolon. And we can see it's got the number 59. And putting 59 into the function chr gives us this column back. Here you can see I've actually assigned 32 to the character code and when that runs we get this. We get the 32 but it would appear that we have nothing following it. Well in fact there's a space following it because 32 is in fact the character for a space and the space would be around here and of course we can't see it. If I arrange the program a little bit better I could have put another variable to be printed so we could have clearly seen the uh, space appearing here. But if we now have a look at this one, here you can see I've made the character code 169. Now when I run that, this is what we get. We get 169 and we get this symbol here, which is the copyright symbol. Now I've put this one in to emphasize the fact that you won't see this on a keyboard, but in fact you will see it displayed many places in many editors and in fact it's got this number here 169 what about all of the other characters that are feasible to be displayed on the screen what about Chinese characters for example well they will also have their own number it's not just all about a b c's full stops commas and so on we can see that there are other characters and other characters from other languages such as uh, Chinese symbols 
but here you can see a symbol it's the uh, copyright symbol let's consider this particular program here we can see we have a for loop and these two particular statements here will be executed a number of times within the for loop and the for loop we can see uses this range function now I've covered this earlier in this particular playlist if you don't understand what the range function does I recommend that you go back and look at this other video but essentially what we will get we will get the loop that is being defined by the for loop going through from 65 to this number here 65 plus 26 and when I say to this number here it will be one less than this particular number now 65 plus 26 is 91 so what this range produces are all of the numbers from 65 up to 90 not 91 it doesn't go quite as far as this number would appear to define so when we first go into the loop this character code here will take this number 65 so this will be 65 which is passed to this function and what this function will do is say right well 65 is capital A so capital A is then given to this particular variable here this line will then print out the character code which is 65 together with the character which is capital A we then go back to execute this line because we are in the for loop and of course what will now have happened is this character code will now be 66 because we go from 65 to 66 and the next time round the loop we go to 67 but here we've got 66 so this is 66 it's passed to this function and of course 66 is capital B so this here will now store capital B we then print out the character code which is 66 we print out the character which is capital B and then we go round the loop again and what we will eventually see being printed is this we will see 65 giving us a 66 giving us B all the way down to 90 giving us capital Z so we can see here that 65 plus 26 was 91 we didn't go as far as 91 it's one less than that so this range function simply defines what this character code is going to be it's going to be 65 then 66 then 67 then 68 so when we go and execute these statements the first time we go through it 65 the next time we go through these two statements are working with 66 the next time we go through they're working with 67 and so on let's now consider this program and you can see it's more or less the same as the previous program we were looking at except I've changed this number here to 97 this one also to 97 so what we're going to have is the range going all the way from 97 all the way up to 122 now this adds up to 123 but if you remember we go to one less than that now of course 97 is the character code and when we pass that through this particular function we should get lowercase a now if you remember I recommended that you remembered what the number was for lowercase a so when we now go through this particular for loop the number of times that is defined by the range function i.e. 97, 98, 99 all the way up to 122 we will get the following output here we can see we go from 97 all the way up to 122 and we can see we have here a b c all lowercase all the way down to the lowercase z here so we have a mechanism for displaying all of the characters here and their associated integer representation as they appear inside a particular computer now I've arranged for the code to be altered again slightly and you can see here that I've changed this to 48 now the reason I've done that is when we run the program we can see that we're going from 48 to 57 and it's showing us that the numbers from 0 to 9 are represented as you can see by these integer values inside a computer so 57 is 9 for example if we carry on we can have a look here that I've now changed the range to actually go from 58 
to 64 but remember it doesn't go as far as 64 it goes one less than that and when we run this particular program this is what we get you see we go from 58 to 63 and you can see that 58 is a colon 59 is a semicolon and 63 actually represents a question mark inside a computer right now let's have a look at this particular statement here what character is actually equal to a chr and in brackets we have character code and let's relate it to this particular diagrammatic view of a function and what we can see is that the character code actually acts as the input to the chr function and what will come out of this particular function is given to the character and of course for some of the examples we've seen we've passed in 65 and we've got our capital A. If we continue now and have a closer look at this particular function what we can see is this is an integer representing one Unicode character that belongs to the Unicode character set and this is quite large because it also incorporates not only all of the full stops, the numbers, the letters it also represents things like the copyright symbol that you've seen and also other languages symbols this particular function returns the string representing a character whose unicode point is the integer passed to the function now what does that mean well pass it 65 you get a out pass it 90 you get z out that's what it really means but i want to stress here that what you're getting out is a string now even though that string is only a length of one it's still a string remember Python doesn't have the character type that other programming languages have so what happens is when we get what the character is we assign it to this particular variable here if we continue to look at this particular function what we can see here that that is the function it's built into Python we can use it anytime we like this here is the integer variable that we're actually going to be passing to the built-in function and what this is is a string variable and we've already said it happens to just to be a string of length one but a string nevertheless check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the youtube channel and get an automatic update every time i upload a new video also consider subscribing to the google plus circle that relates to these videos